all off to a great start. Basketball, girls are undefeated so far. Boys are also starting off strong. Both won the TNT Cup. Alpine, Alpine sc skiing, men and women were both first in the first races, sweeping the season so far. Snowboard just had a, snowboarding just had a race. Girls took first and boys third. First team overall. Lots of new riders looking forward to having a great season. Nordic, boys have placed second and third so far. Girls have placed a placed first and second. As you know, we have a lot of student athletes competing in Far West and they are doing really well. Free ride and racing athletes are looking forward to a great success and fun season. There, there was also a request for a reminder announcement that our girls soccer and both cross country teams won the all, all won the state championship this fall in case any of you missed that. There's a course fair during Pathways tomorrow where 11th through 9th through 11th graders can talk to teachers about different courses to help them make decisions for upcoming course selections for next year. We are also excited to offer some new courses including AP Statistics, AP Pre-Calculus, Sports Medicine 2, um, Mariachi um, Banda, and Music Production as new band classes for students who may have not been in them before. All students are preparing hard for finals, which will be Wednesday through Friday of next week. Hi, my name is Karen Medina. I'm a senior at North Tahoe High School. Really excited for winter, homecoming February, spirit week all week with dressed up days each day with a snow theme. Uh, we have a spirit, we have a spirit up that the grade level competes. Winter Homecoming has an air band competition. The theme is musicals, rally and basketball games on February 10th, dance February 11th, theme is masquerade ball, trying to make our homecoming dance more like semi-formal event this year. Project grad parents are hard at working, planning senior year, and events including a safe and sober grad night event. Thank you very much, ladies. And now we will move to the 10.0, the North Tahoe High School School Showcase. Superintendent Geisels. This is Joanna Mitchell and her team are coming up. Thank you. Am I talking? Okay. Thank you, uh, Jolie and Karen, for stepping in there. Um, so Skylar and um, Franny normally do our board report, and they actually are stuck in traffic, and they're part of this presentation. So they just kind of stepped in and read the notes with no preparation. So. Thank you to, for, to them for doing that. And so Franny and Skylar might um, run up here if they make it. Uh, we also had a car breakdown. So um, three of our pre student presenters are not here tonight. Um, so we will, you know, just make it all work. Um, but we are really happy to be here tonight uh, to talk about North Tahoe High School, do a little spotlight um, on North Tahoe. Uh, North Tahoe High School is the home of the Lakers. Uh, you might ask what a Laker is, and the Laker is really a very versatile uh, mascot for us. Um, if this will go, make it go. Oh. So um, traditionally, it could be a uh, Poseidon or Neptune figure with the trident. Um, but for some people, it might be a Sasquatch riding Tessie in Lake Tahoe holding a trident and wearing a cowboy hat. Um, I would like to point out that this logo that we have this year was designed by Devin. Devin, wave. And he's wearing the staff shirt that um, our teachers got this year. You'll do it? Okay. 
So um, this, the versatility of the Laker embodies our Laker motto of be yourself, believe in yourself. So really any of these things, whatever you need a Laker to be, that's what it is. Um, so this presentation is going to give you a quick overview of North Tahoe High School, and then we are going to focus on um, a, on a lot what we've done um, to build SEL in our culture, um, and some of the supports that we're going to talk about are unique to North Tahoe High School, and some are not. The district has many amazing social emotional supports throughout the district, and so this presentation is just going to highlight what that looks like at North. Tahoe High School. Skylar, are you here? Okay, so overall, um, North Tahoe High School is known for being a small, comprehensive high school with large school offerings, um, but our small school is growing uh, dramatically. So we are now over 500 students. Um, we are known for the post-secondary success of our students, as well as our independent study ski academy. Um, and we have a really high extracurricular participation rate. Um, we have, there's over 300 students um, involved in one or more sports. Um, and we have 80 students in our leadership class. Um, we're also known for the family feeling that uh, we create at North Tahoe High School. Good evening, everybody. I am Hillary Jimenez, and I run the Wellness Center at North Tahoe High School. Um, and as Joanna mentioned, academic supports are just one part of supporting students' social-emotional well-being, and it is an important part. At North Tahoe High School, teachers provide individual student support in class, as well as during RTI time. Teachers are also available outside of class time for support, and we also offer two Saturday schools a month to provide additional supported time for students to get help with their schoolwork. North Tahoe High School also has a support classes, excuse me, support classes for students who need a little extra help in specific areas. And this structured system of academic support earned North Tahoe High School the California Gold Ribbon way back in 2015 and we have been strengthening it ever since. So the Wellness Center has existed for nearly 10 years. It originally started with one part-time employee for both North Tahoe and Truckee High School and now has grown to a full-time employee, myself, and a part-time intern. Uh, the Wellness Center provides Tier 1 supports for all students and provides a variety of programming aimed at student emotional wellness. This includes supervising several clubs, running groups, and special interest projects, um, in addition to providing real-time, one-on-one support for our North Tahoe High School students. Administration and mental health support staff have weekly circle of care meetings to identify and discuss students who are in need of additional supports, and then how to connect them with those resources. Administration and counselors have weekly one-to-one -one support meetings with all students who have multiple Ds and Fs to help them make an academic improvement plan for the week. Myself and the wellness team provide regular mindfulness and social emotional learning lessons for our students in Pathways. And a lot of these things have been in place for quite some time. Um, and I'll step in for Franny here. Um, we infuse wellness into the fabric of our culture. Um, we do mindful minutes in Pathways class um, or at the beginning of the week in our announcements. We have staff bonding and yoga activities at staff meetings throughout the year. We actually had um, free staff yoga today. Um, there are wellness projects in the wellness center throughout the year. Um, yoga in PE classes and in core classes when it connects to the content. Um, and we take time for gratitude and appreciation through leadership thank you notes, um, shout outs and announcements, recognition through student of the month. And then we have our leadership does the tireless teacher um, with that big tire that they deliver to um, any educator in the school who goes above and beyond. And so our, our most recently recognized uh, person was our, our lone custodian, uh, Gregorio. And then our staff also leads by example, especially with the idea of not taking yourself too seriously. And this was the staff at last year's prom. Oh, 
All right. Hi, my name is Devin Jason Rios. I'm a senior at North Tahoe High School. Um, most high schools have sports, band, and leadership. The difference with North Tahoe High School is how many students are involved in these activities. 80 students are involved in student leadership, and 304 students playing one or more sports are additionally or, or play one or more sports. Additionally, we have tons of different clubs students can participate in. And yeah, um, give me one moment. So, as a student at North Tahoe High, I've been able to express my authentic self by including myself in extracurricular activities like basketball, a sport that made me step out of my comfort zone. I've been able to showcase my talents at school by roller skating at the pep rally, making illustrations for my community during, a dif during difficult times, and being able to sell my stickers where I learned to network with others. By being my authentic self at North Tahoe High School, I am comfortable enough to show my true emotions and be an example for other students. Um, hi, it's Jolie Griffin um, from North Tahoe High School again. I'm in 12th grade. Um, so North Tahoe High School has a club for anyone and any interest. Many of our clubs focus on areas related to social emotional er learning, like social activism, and engage students with their community. Interact Club is um, a community service focused club that works with the local Rotary Club. Uh, animal Advocates organizes events to support animal welfare and appreciation, and Envirolution seeks to organize community awareness and events that promote conservation and preservation in our natural resources. Hi, I'm Bere Lopez, I'm a senior, and there are another set of clubs that focus on improving our school, making our school and making the high school experience for our Lakers the best it can be. Link Crew has an, has an SEL focus. It is designed to train upperclassmen in ways to support freshmen in transitioning to high school. They create fun team building and confidence building activities and make sure every freshman is directly connected with a caring, supportive upperclassmen. There's also Hope Squad, which trains students who were identified by their peers as positive support to connect students with mental health resources. Pride Club is devoted to preventing hate and homophobia and spreading understanding and celebration of diversity. They also provide education for the school and community on LGBTQ plus issues. Athletes Committed identifies leaders on each sports team to be trained in supporting their teammates in positive decision making and healthy living. Be the Change Club seeks to organize activities that bring students in the school together and recognize the value and worth of each individual. individual. <laughs> and I personally have been on both ends of Link Crew and can say I've seen the benefits. As a freshman, my Link Crew leader made the transition of high school so much smoother for me by supporting me during volleyball as a lost freshman. As a junior and senior, I can definitely say I've, I've made friends with the freshmen and they have came to me for support and advice. Hello, I'm Seth Michael. I'm Julian Bollint. Uh, and I'm Casey Monroe. We are all freshmen, and uh, at here at North Hall High School, there's a wide range of clubs with varying degrees of participation and activity. Each of these clubs is student-driven. In addition to many of the mainstream clubs you may think of, we also have audiovisual club, a kayak club, a Dungeons and Dragons club, a fly fishing club, a cornhole club, a chess club, and many more. There is something for everyone at North Tahoe, and if not, students are encouraged to make a new club. Uh, this club in involvement is a huge part of social and emotional learning and identity building. So I can say personally that me and Julian here, we made the Dungeons and Dragons Club because when we came to high school, we heard about this whole club building experience, and we just really wanted to be able to start our own thing. And... Uh, yeah. And I created the audio visual club as it is something I'm passionate about and wanted to show my peers the wonders of it. Uh, 
creating our own club was a great experience. We were able to get to know people that we've never met, and it was an awesome experience to get to know and connect with the upperclassmen. Hi, my name is Karen Medina. I'm a senior at North Tahoe High School. The GRIT is another program that combines academic and social emotional support. It was developed to provide extra support navigating the path to college for potential first gen college goers. The program consists of three levels of college and career readiness classes, after school information sessions and workshops for parents, a partnership with Adventure Risk Challenge to involve students in outdoor activities to build confidence, leadership, and writing skills. College visits are incorporated into the program to help students explore what college is really like. I've been a part of the GRIP program for about four years. Throughout these four years, I have learned to be more confident and vulnerable when it comes to speaking and personal experience. And it has helped me with my writing skills and get to go on trips to look at colleges and bond with classmates in Long Beach and Zephyr Point and be vulnerable while learning new skills. Because of this opportunity, as a first-gen student, I plan on attending college in the fall. I have been accepted to, into nine colleges, and I'm waiting to hear from two more. So even though Norta High School has had this culture of connections and involvement for a long time, we've identified that students continue to struggle with really heavy and varied social emotional needs that sometimes get in the way of them thriving personally and academically. As a result, NTHS has, the, with the help of TTUSD, um, has added some social emotional supports. So we now have a school social worker who provides whole family supports. We have five on-site therapists available to support students throughout the week and meet regularly with students. We have two campus monitors trained in nonviolent crisis prevention and intervention. We have an on-site interpreter dedicated to the Nortau campus and 11 other bilingual employees on-site, seven of which are in our front office. Um, we have a mindfulness-based substance abuse treatment program um, for students through the Wellness Center and Gateway Mountain Center. We do Can Do You, which is a social emotional learning lesson in Pathways. We provide assemblies focused on community building and positive self-talk. We provide wellness lessons in English classes on various topics. And the counseling and wellness empowerment groups, so we provide groups on grief, nutrition, anxiety, and social skills. So as part of the uh, cycle of continuous improvement, we're always looking, you knew it was there, uh, we're always looking for what our next step is, how we improve, uh, we continue to improve. So we have identified that two of our next needs are um, revitalizing and filling our school resource officer position, which has been vacant um, for a while now, and adding additional bilingual aid support, which we are uh, working to actually hire someone for the second semester um, to provide a additional support. And Franny and Skyler are here. Yeah. <laughs> I am Franny Grimant. <laughs> I am also a senior at North Tahoe High School. Um, Hi, I'm Skyler. I'm also a senior at North Tahoe High School. <laughs> And all of this presentation and everything in Nortao that has come about would not be possible without all of the staff, all of our Laker staff that we love and appreciate. <laughs> <clears throat> and when I tell you those teachers put up with a lot, I mean a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Go Lakers. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. That's your line. That's your line. Go Lakers! Yay. <laughs> that, thing prepared. that was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And then I'm sure the t-shirts are where? 
Just wondering. She's such a nature. Ah, so exciting. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you guys so very much. Thank Brandon, you very much. Thank you for making it. Skylar. Thank you, Hillary. Was it? Thank you. That is the best part. Thank you for letting us have those again. And we always love having highlights. Um, okay, so at this point, we will move back to 7.0 public comment. And at this point, I'm just going to read 7.1. And it says, um, no action or discussion shall be undertaken on any item not appearing on the posted agenda except the members of the Board of Trustee or the Tower Truckee Unified School District staff may briefly respond to statements made or questions posted. Three minutes will be given to each person. Um, and there is a time limit uh, for this session of 30 minutes. And we will assess that. At this point, I have only a few. Uh, seven. So we should be able to make it within the half hour. Well, any more? And if there is another one, any other public comments? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, marvelous. Thank you. Okay, is everyone covered? Okay. At this point, um, the first one will be David Stakely, and the second one will be Dominic Lopez and Piper Krill. And so, yeah, we're up front, thank you. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, my name is David Stakely. I am a classroom teacher at North Tau High School. I am also the TTA lead negotiator. It's great to see all the purple in the room this evening. Um, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the bargaining team. Our board has historically stated that they value teachers and aim to provide as large a salary increase as, as the district can afford. The issue in this negotiation is our differing opinion of what TTUSD can afford. We've prepared an analysis of property tax projections at different times throughout the budget cycle, from adoption to like when the real numbers come in, from 2014 to 2022. And you guys were provided this in an email last night. I also have paper copies uh, for the board as well. Um, what this analysis shows is that CFO Todd Rivera conservatively underestimates actual property tax revenue by 3.20% on average and never less than 1.95% over this time period. Given the size of the T2SD budget, this means that if Todd Rivera was as conservative this year as he is on average, we would expect uh, a couple addition, an additional couple million dollars, depending on the percentage of the budget that ends up being tax revenue, which changes year to year. Um, an extra couple million dollars of property tax revenue that does not appear in the current budget to be realized by T2SD in future years. And this trend is similar, but actually larger, when you look at overall revenue and not just property tax data, and I'm happy to share that analysis as well. This amount of money easily funds a raise that matches inflation for TTUSD, or for TTA, and also for all other employee groups. Historically, uh, this realized revenue um, has been larger than what, what Todd projects at this point. Both newly elected board members and incumbents have always said they are open to listening to perspective from both admin and TTA. We think this analysis demonstrates that the, co that the raise that the raises matching inflation that TTA is asking for will not result in future deficit spending or layoffs of any kind and are reasonable within the monies that TTSD will actually have available. And in fact, previous settlements have been paid for by adjusting property tax estimates in, eva in exactly this way. Everyone wants to end this negotiation. E everyone. Both sides know this isn't the best use of our collective energy. Teachers want to be using their mental energy focusing on their students, and the board has other important items to address as well. Please use your authority as the board to end all of this by providing us with an offer that meets inflation and shows your staff you listen to us, you hear us, and you value our contribution. Think for a minute about how your staff is made to feel that they have to fight this hard to just not lose ground. I know this isn't the message the board means to send to our teaching staff. Let's work together. Help put us back in TTUSD.
Thank you very much. Um, and now Dominic and Piper. Next will be Mike Maisie. And if. We are here on behalf of TTUSD students advocating for our phenomenal teachers who set Truckee's youth up for success not only in future academic or professional endeavors, but also as contributing members of society. Having taken economics as a, requ a, requ as a requirement, we are aware that money does not grow on trees and you cannot simply print or give out more. Schools take a lot of money to run with materials, snow removal, and other logistics. However, we also understand that property taxes influence the revenue of our schools. As we all know, the real estate market exploded astronomically the past two years, with a median home price of around $1 million in 2021. The schools will see an increase in revenue, and teachers should not only be compensated for bigger class sizes, extra hours, and more responsibilities, but also increased cost of living. As we look through the 2022-23 proposed budget of about $83,800,000, we took note that 40% goes to certified salaries, which includes teachers. Nevertheless, underneath that section, we did not see equitable salary increase that matches inflation rates or fully accounts for the drastic and quickly onset acceleration of the cost of living. As of November 2022, we have a reserve of 25% which equates to over $22,500,000. A reserve is needed for rainy days, but livable wages are needed to retain great teachers. I turned 18 and had this October and had the honor of voting in the 2022 election. I've put my trust in you to be a neutral group of supervisors who do what is best for students in our district. We, ult we ask you to ultimately follow TTUSD, the TTUSD vision at the top of your papers. Actions speak louder than words, and we are confident that you will remember beliefs 9 and 13 that are highlighted on your papers when making decisions. Teachers are the ones with the biggest impact on our learning and who have time and time again gone so far beyond their job description. These hardworking individuals are more than worthy of a warranted raise. We ask that you support our TTUSD teachers and invest in their futures like they continue to invest in ours. We thank, thank you, you for, for your time. time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, and after Mike Maisie, uh, Manzi, sorry, Mike Mazy will be John Halverson. Uh, and then that, Kelly that, Norris. That's a tough act to follow. Uh. Uh, first, I'd like to say congratulations to the new board members and welcome back to the existing board members. We appreciate all the time and effort that you put into helping make this district a great one for all of our students. My name is Mike Maisie. I've been teaching since 2005 and specifically at Truckee High since 2012. Um, others have already talked about the cost of living, living in the area and it's plain to see that the district is in excellent financial health. And while we all know that economic downturns happen from time to time, we live in an area that has seen continued growth in property tax revenue for the 25 years that I've been here, especially accelerating in the past 10 years or so. A reasonable rainy day fund is understandable, but money just sitting there earning interest for the district does not help students in the classroom. I also coach the academic team, currently undefeated, which is re very rewarding in every way except financially. I do receive a stipend for that, but I recently calculated the amount of time I spend on this activity, which includes practices, competitive meets, travel time to Yarrington, and realized that I receive approximately $12 per hour after taxes. Additionally, if a teacher at THS covers a class when there is a lack of subs, they end up receiving a, um, a paltry $35 after taxes for giving up all their prep time. Like all teachers, I do what I do because I love it, but the lack of financial appreciation shown for our efforts can be demoralizing at times. 
one specific area of negotiations that is concerning to me and that I think the board and the public should be aware of is that we teachers are asking for more class time instead of the many minimum days or early release days with professional development for teachers in the afternoon. My experience has been that these trainings and meetings have a minimal impact directly on my teaching in the classroom. The fact that the district negotiating team has been insisting on keeping these types of meetings instead of giving teachers more time to teach and help students is frankly absurd. Most teachers I know already struggle with having enough class time to teach required content, work with students on reteaching activities, and deal with independent study and absent students, etc. Simply put, we need more time with students and not more time in meetings. Another area of negotiation that is concerning is the continued obsession by some district personnel about personal necessity leave. We are often told that we are valued professionals, but actions speak louder than words. We didn't coordinate that, by the way. The, the district has a history of what feels like harassment and inconsistent interpretation and application of the rules regarding teacher time off with regards to PN days. If we were truly valued as professionals, the district would give up meddling with this basic employment right. I have worked in the private sector for over 15 years and have never seen or been subjected to the level of micromanaging of these kinds of days off um, as I see here. I would like the board to encourage the district negotiating team to reach a settlement with us about these issues. The money is there to support our financial needs without harming the long-term financial stability of the district, and we would like to be shown, not told, that we are respected for what we do by allowing us more time with students and less interference from the district. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Mike. And now John and then Kelly Norris, you will follow John Halverson. It's on. Thank you, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Geisels. My name is John Halverson. As many of you know, I work for the California Teachers Association as professional staff for the Todd Truck Education Association. So it's exciting to see you all here, get to reunite with some of you I haven't seen in a long time. But I want to make it clear to the board tonight I'm talking as a parent of Todd Lake Elementary students and as a, a parent of a North Todd High School student. I am a former teacher here at Truckee High School for 18 years. Um, I'm also speaking tonight as a taxpayer and as a homeowner who was lucky enough to move here in the, with my wife in the 90s, unlike probably many of you out there in this room. That said, recently we made the choice. We moved over to the lake and we now own a home over there and we're paying four times the property tax than we used to when we were on the Truckee side. I wanted to go through this and think about how TTUSD could do better by our employees. And I'm not here to speak just for the teachers tonight, although I care about you all deeply, but also our classified staff, our managers, our administrators, everyone who's facing the challenges, but most importantly, our lowest and paid employees. So I want to use bus drivers as an example tonight. My wife and I received another email asking if we could volunteer to drive for school events, which my wife does all the time, always has. She's been a member of PTO. She's tried to get so she could help out with subbing. She volunteers in the classroom, so we gladly do that. But the reason was we're short bus drivers. So I contacted the Department of Transportation and clarified that we were down 11. We've recently hired three, which is great news. So we're still down eight drivers, but those three are still in training, so we're still down 11 drivers. We've had to cut transportation, which I know community members who no longer have their kids being bused to school, by 30%, from 3,000 students daily to 2,100. So with all that in mind, I also have parents who are aging and are retirees on fixed budgets. I would say teachers are on a fixed budget, classified bus drivers are on a fixed budget. My mother just received an 8.13% increase to her social security. I think as the richest district in the region, I mentioned that last time, we can do better. That's my new hashtag, TTUSD can do better. We need to do better by our employees. We need to at least find a way to pay them inflation. I don't want to single out any employee group, but to see the board quickly and without much conversation approve our highest paid employees receiving the same 7% increase that you offered our bus drivers, our janitors, and all of our other classified staff, concerning. It's not apples to apples. 7%, as we all know, is a lot more when you make a lot more than someone else. So am I saying teachers should receive the same? No, we bargain TTA for the teachers. Other groups have their representatives. That said, I went through all the budgets since 2016-17, kind of interesting along the lines of what David Stakely talked about tonight, and looked at what we have projected for revenue when we adopt budgets since that time till now, and what we've put out in our multi-years. If you go through that, on average, we have received 7.08% more revenue each year since 2016-17 than we project at the beginning of the year. If you take that and multiply it times what Todd put in the multi-year projections for next year, a 
revenue projected at $90 million, $106,000, 7.08%. I like averages. If you look at a stock portfolio, never go on the big years, never go on the bad years, but look at an Thank average. Thank you, John. I think that's your time. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. That would be $6 million. And at $557,000, to give an extra 1% to every employee in this district, there's money to get this done. Thank you. Thank you. After Kelly will be uh, Sven Leaf. Hi, uh, thanks for allowing me to speak here tonight. Uh, not super excited about speaking here tonight, but I think it's important to hear the teacher's perspectives. Um, and clearly there's a difference between what the district um, believes the teachers are valued at and what we believe we are valued at. Um, it's confusing and frustrating because we know you and we know that you are compassionate people who have supported education and teachers in the past. I love my job. I love the schools that my kids go to and I love the school where I work. Um, as Joanna Mitchell said, we are a family. You saw all the phenomenal things that are happening. We are a uniquely fantastic group of people um, who come to school each day, not just to work, but to inspire. And we do it with enthusiasm and humor and patience and a smile. And um, we were not able to hire an additional math teacher. So many of our teachers are teaching at Overage this year which can suck the love of teaching even out of the most um, phenomenal teachers. And um, I bring this up because it highlights the district's need to attract quality teachers and fill current positions and the inevitable future positions that will open up. And keeping up with inflation will is one of those ways to attract and retain teachers in the area. We are asked multiple times a week, like Mike said, to sub for each other's classes. And most of the time we do it with a smile. Um, we are there, we love the students, um, and we love being with them all day long. Um, but when we do that, we give up our prep time, we give up our grading times, we need to give feedback, we need to prepare engaging lessons, and that pushes it to the evening when we're with our families. And we're happy to do this, because like I said, we're a team, we're a family, we support each other. But as negotiations drag on and we feel less and less valued, we are less and less likely to be able to do that and be willing to do that and be able to work at brunch and work at lunch and work after school, um, which we all do with a smile and we're happy to do it. But as we feel less and less valued, it will clearly impact negatively on teacher relationships with students and student achievement in our classrooms. We know the cost of living has gone up in Tahoe dramatically. It's the groceries, it's gas, it's household supplies. A cost of living adjustment is needed to retain teachers in the area. I don't know a single teacher who got into teaching because of money. I doubt there are many, if any, out there. We are not a greedy group of people. We just want to be able to provide for our families. Please consider doing what you can to provide us with a salary increase. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. After Sven will be Heidi uh, Rothany, is it correct? Superintendent Geisels, the rest of the board, and, and all the gang in the room. I didn't get the memo about purple. Um, I, it's, it got the green light on here. Yeah, I can try to eat it. Um, I, I'm simply here, yeah, I, that's, that's great. I'm simply here to introduce myself as the new general manager of the Truckee Recreation and Park District. Um, Steve Randall, many of you probably knew. I'm um, going to get choked up a little bit. The man, 37, 38 years of service with us, he's retired. His retirement uh, reception is next Wednesday, the 25th, at 4 to 7 o'clock at the Arts Center. Would love everybody who knew him or want to pay tribute to swing through. We're going to have a nice time there. Um, I started as a general manager last Wednesday. I've been with the district for more than five and a half years. I live in Glenshire. My kids are on uh, University of Nevada, uh, so my daughters have outgrown um, what you guys might be teaching, unless there's a college professor here. Um, but, you know, what I love, I've always loved Truckee since I was a child in the 70s, and I'm just blessed to be able to bring my career 
to where we are now. What's great about what we do in this community is all of these districts, including the town and the county, we work so well as partners in so many areas. And where I think I'll use the rest of my time is to kind of highlight some of what the great things we do do because we work at the recreation district with your administrative staff. We work with your coaches. We work with your principals. We work with your teachers. We work with your athletic directors. We work with transportation. And thank God for Nanette and company um, because it's really, really key how much we do together. You guys have used our pools. We use your schools for before and after. There's so much relationships that we do for the families in this community together, and it's fantastic. The joint use agreement that we have together is just the beginning piece. And so we've got this great tradition, and I'm excited to carry it forward you know um I lost my train of thought because i didn't prepare my my notes but um we really just do it well for this community together and with the other districts and i do want to commend all of the teachers and all the administrators despite all the challenges that business you know really is um this community is very blessed to have all of you in all of your different roles and we're just honored to be um, working with you. So I wanted to come. I brought my business cards. I'll leave them with uh, Todd. He can circulate them so you can use me as a contact. Because whether it's in your professional role or your personal role, congratulations as well to the newly elected folks. You know, I want to keep reaching out and, and extending what Steve has built and really trying to you know, keep using the Recreation District to, to better this community in the, in, in the future. So um, thank you for what you all do. Thank you, Sven, and welcome to your new role. I said thank you and welcome to your new role. Five days is good. After um, Heidi will be Mary Barrelson. Good evening to all members of the TTUSD School Board, District Office, Administrators, my colleagues, parents, valued members of our community, and absolutely amazing students. My name is Heidi Rothery. I am a seventh grade teacher at Alder Creek Middle School. I wear many hats and have throughout my teaching career. Each year that I have been employed as a full-time classroom teacher in TTUSD, I have been a coach of multiple sports, PLC lead, committee member, mentor, and period substitute teacher for my colleagues. Most importantly, I am a parent of two children in the district. A quick scan of our district website reveals our district beliefs. The following resonate most with me. Number one, students are the focus of all decisions. Two, a culture of accountability shall drive excellence and promote the district vision of teaching and learning. Three, open, honest, respectful, and responsive communication is fundamental to the collaborative process. Nine, teachers are passionate professionals entrusted with the duty of ensuring the highest level of learning for all students. 12, the superintendent chief learning officer has a critical responsibility to communicate a vision of the future and to initiate and support action toward the vision. 13, the board of education is entrusted with the responsibility for setting policies and strategies that are consistent with these beliefs and assures the district meets its vision. The past couple of years have been extremely emotionally trying and exhausting. Each day I am left feeling well, frankly baffled. I have read quotes by former board members criticizing us teachers. Us teachers have been called to band together in unison to continuously beg and plead for a livable wage. Why? Where did our relationship get off course? If we want to teach and inspire our students to work collaboratively, why aren't we modeling this? My students and their needs come first. This is what drives my instruction. Our negotiations and lack of collaboration do not align with our district vision and beliefs. We are asking for decreasing class sizes, more time with kids, and increasing our educator salaries to keep us here. I stand before you tonight wearing purple to show my unity with my colleagues for our students. I also wear our t-shirt with a message that I miss, TTSD. There was a time when I felt as a teacher that I felt I was valued and respected. Most days now, I do not feel that way. You know our budget numbers and economic climate figures. I know these numbers. I know that you know these figures and numbers. Yet here we are. Why should I be called from home on a school night to try and get you all to understand why? Me and my colleagues are justified in receiving a fair and livable wage. Does our daily commitment and work not show proof? It is supposed that we are asking for a raise, when in fact we are just trying to minimize the pay cut. 
accepting anything below the true rate of inflation is indeed a pay cut. Thank you, Heidi. And then after Mary Bolson is Paula Bossler. All right, wow, there's so many of us in purple. I'm so proud of you all. Um, I'm gonna just lively up this room and um, I love working here so much and I'm not reading from notes. So I won't be like looking down and being all nervous today. Um, I think TTUSD is incredible. I've had the best career I could imagine working here. And I want to do a little uh, audience participation game here. If your answer is yes, you can raise like this, or you can snap, or you can clap. So if you worked with me at Kings Beach Elementary, nobody? That was a long time ago. <laughs> Did you work with me at summer school? All right, we got a couple of you guys. Did you work with me at Glenshire? Okay, I just from trying to show like what a great big humongous family we are and how cool our school district is. Did you work with me at ACMS? Have you sung karaoke with me? <clears throat> Have you gone camping with me? Have I been your uh, kid's teacher? Have I been your mentor? I know a couple of you. <clears throat> Have I played ukulele with you? Have you sung with me? Have we played music together? Have you taught my kids? Rachel and Rebecca, they both went to great colleges after their great education here. And like I'm saying, I think TTUSD is just amazing. Um, your kids, uh, camping, ukulele. All right. <laughs> Have you gone to conferences with me? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Have you swam in Palm Springs and gone to Hot Springs with me? Yeah. All right. So I think our school district is so amazing. I want this school district to have a legacy after I leave, which, you know, is going to be soon. And I want you, I want TTUSD to be the place where like, wow, that school district is so amazing. They pay the teachers so much, you've got to go work there. Instead of, yeah, you can't live there. You can't, you can't make a living there. You have to drive really far to come work there. No, they don't really pay enough. They've got a lot of money. Man, they're one of the only basic aid districts in the, in the state, but they don't pay their teachers as much as other places who have less money. It's kind of insane to me. And I said I was simple-minded last week, but it just seems sort of insane to me that that... We should just be like the kind that they write in the newspaper, like, oh my God, Tahoe Truckee is so cool. They pay their teachers like an amazing amount of money because they're worth it. So I just don't want us to be remembered or to be thought of as the district where like people don't, can't come here. That, you know, I don't know. It seems like we should be better. I want to do a shout out to facilities, transportation, custodial, the electrician. Hi, honey. <laughs> Uh, the administration, assistance, food service, uh, the paraprofessionals, and I'm going to take a quick selfie in the next five seconds. So if you are one of the clappers out there, I want you to wave to me, please. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Barrelson. Uh, Paula Bossler, and then after that will be Zulema. Test, test. Thank you everyone for wearing your purple tonight. I am usually the person behind the camera, but tonight here I stand before you. So good evening board, good evening home team. Um, I am here to make sure that my voice is heard because oftentimes I'm making sure your voice is heard. <sighs> it's true, I chose this teaching profession, but not initially. Well, it feels like a lifetime ago, I was accepted into grad school and while well on my way to getting my PhD in biological anthropology, nerd alert, um, I was going to become an expert on human behavior and evolution and have that piece of paper to prove it. But after four years as a lab rat during my undergrad, I wanted to take a break in Tahoe for a summer before starting my program. Here I stand 18 years later. Um, without that piece of paper, but with a wealth of knowledge about human behavior and development that no lab or field study could have ever prepared me for. 
In the classroom, I have grown as an educator to develop new skills and adapt to challenging situations. And I've always been drawn to education. But whenever education came up as a career, all of my mentors and peers would say, don't, go, don't become a teacher. There's no money in that. Whenever I heard this, I often thought, why? Why is this statement so ingrained in our society? Why don't teachers get paid, as well as other similarly educated professions? Why wouldn't you pay teachers more for the profession where all other professions are born? Why am I afraid to join this profession that I'm so drawn to just because of this perception? And finally, I came to the conclusion, as scientists often do, why am I still asking these questions? Just become a teacher already and impact change from within. So yes, I chose this profession because I'm passionate about public education and because the perception of education wasn't going to change on its own. So I needed to step up and do the work. So here I stand before you tonight to do that work. The work that will help keep teachers here, where they live, in our communities, where they can volunteer. And I ask the board tonight to help me do this work as well. Let's keep teachers here where they can thrive and continue to do the great work that we do. Thank you. Thank you, Paula, for your one year visit that you had planned, and here you are. Awesome. <laughs> Zulema? Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Sulema Medina, and I'm a first grade teacher at Kings Beach Elementary. This is going to be my fourth year teaching. Like a number of my colleagues, I have been a member of our TTUSD community for my whole life. I grew up attending TTUSD schools, student taught at Kings Beach Elementary with my former kindergarten teacher, got my credential and master's degree from SNU, and now I teach in my own former first grade classroom. <laughs> After finishing my master's, I moved to Monterey, trading one beautiful place for another. But what I was missing there was community. I never ran into anyone I knew at the store or on any errand, errand around town. It made me realize how special it is and how lucky I am to be in this small community where I will without a doubt run into a family when I go to the store. And this was always my dream to live and teach here and continue being part of this community. I look forward to the days when my students have grown up and I'll be able to support them and watch their soccer and basketball games in high school. I enjoy going to the Kermeses to fundraise their events. However, this dream that I have given everything to achieve is threatened. Every month I fear that I will need to move. I live in a small one bedroom apartment that is month to month any given month, my landlord can ask me to leave. During the election this fall, I had a sign endorsing our now elected board members and my landlord slash neighbor asked me to remove the sign. In that moment, I felt powerless. Either I voice my opinion and protest that I have this right or stay quiet to avoid the potential for this di dispute being the cause to kick me out. After looking up places to live and seeing that there is nothing in my price range, I had to choose being quiet to have a place to live. This raise would give me some peace of mind that I would be able to continue living here if I need to move from my current place. I want to teach where I live and continue being part of my community, the community that made me who I am today. I realize that the result of this negotiation alone wouldn't necessarily mean the difference between being able to buy a home and not, but this is an important step in the direction of keeping our tight-knit community what it has always been and creating the opportunity for teachers to live in the community they teach. Thank you. Thank you, Zulema. At this point, uh, is there anyone else? We do have an opportunity for five more minutes if we want. If there's anyone else who would like to speak, and then that will be the end of our public speaking. This will not. Just today, special. 
Green lights on. Can you guys hear me? Uh, Beef, when you get done, we need one of these. Where are those? They should be outside, but we'll get you one. Don't you worry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Hi, my name is Heidi Bushway Verkler, and um, this is my 31st year teaching. <laughs> Hence the gray hair. Started in Vermont, where Dee Dee's from, and uh, moved on, and now I'm out here. I've been out here since 2000. Started the uh, multi-age school. Zulema's husband was a fifth grader in that class in uh, 2000. And as you know, for those of you who have been around a while, I come with props. Always, usually. Um, I am the STEAM teacher, STEAM elective teacher at North Tahoe School, middle school. I left Truckiel. Shout out to Truckiel and all those young mamas with those wonderful future TTUSD st um, students. Thanks for bringing them. And those little kiddos, thanks for supporting your moms. Um, but I brought this shirt that some other people brought as well, and I wore it last week to school. And I'm not really feeling much us, as Heidi Rothery, my friend and colleague, said. Um, I want to wear this shirt again. I actually want a new one. Um, I'd like a new one with a bigger us. It maybe stands out a little bit more. I'll have my STEM students, uh, STEAM students design it for you. But I worked hard with a wonderful team of people this summer in July, August, September, October to work on this, right? We worked hard on this so that we would feel more us. I want to feel more us. Now is the time to feel more us. So please, 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 board, please end negotiations. Please listen to the facts, look at the facts, and let's end negotiations because we want more us. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Heidi Bushway, Berkler. And at this point, um, thank you very much for public comment. We will now move on to 9.0 superintendent's report. Superintendent okay. Geisels. I'll make this very quick. Um, weather watch meeting tomorrow morning at 3.45. Please. <laughs> yeah. Please check your emails in the morning. Thank you. Thank you for that. We will now move on to the consent agenda. Uh, Superintendent Geisels, any changes to the consent agenda? We have no changes. Board, does anyone care to pull anything from the consent? With that... Could we get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I might just wait just a sec as we let the crowd descend so we can hear. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 13.0, educational services. Superintendent Geisels, can you introduce that for us? Yes, I will have Ms. Kirsten Kramer, our Assistant Super of Educational Services, introduce this item. Good evening. It's my pleasure to bring forward the recommendation to the Board of Trustees um, to consider the adoption of the Marine Science Dynamic Ocean textbook for our Marine Biology High School class. During the pilot process, the students and the teacher found that this textbook is an excellent match for that course. That teacher is dedicated to a hands-on approach to science, and she was very pleasantly surprised by the resources offered by the text, including the online port platform. They find that each unit is structured around a current issue and a case study. And students are engaged in critical thinking and problem solving through interactive activities and labs. Both the teachers and the students are finding the lab materials and the textbook accessible, easy to read. An example she gave me is they read in the text about fish and then a follow-up lab on fish dissection went very well and the students commented about how much the text helped prepare them for that experience. So it is being very well received and utilized, and therefore the staff is recommending your consideration of this textbook. And I will bring this item back to you on March 1st. We will allow the textbooks to be on display for public to come and view and ask any questions. So we'll bring it back for an adoption approval on March 1st. Thank you for that. 
And board, are we okay with all that? Perfect, yeah. okay, thank you. Moving on to 14.0, business services um, facilities. Superintendent Geisels. Yes. Um, back, I believe it was September or August, we had a student from North Tahoe High School, Mr. Quill Cook, who came and did a fantastic presentation about gender neutral bathrooms. So this time, um, we're going to give an update on what we've done regarding next steps. And Mr. Rivera is going to give us that update. Thank you very much. Um, so it was October 19th, actually. I wrote it down. Um, Quill gave us a great presentation and provided a lot of information on not only general neutral restroom requirements, um, but also um, gave us some information that made us rethink on how we serve and, may, and provide access to all of our students, even on such small things that we take for granted, such as restrooms. Um, so the board did direct us to evaluate um, single-use restrooms at our school sites. And we not only did that, but even more than just evaluation. Um, and I'd like to first off just thank uh, Rob Coster, our Director of Facilities, and also Pat McKechnie, um, our Operations Supervisor, who essentially inventoried all of the single-use restrooms at all of our school sites. Um, that was the first step in the process and identified um, what their current designation was, whether they were access accessible to students or whether they were staff-only restrooms. Um, then Rob had had met with all of the uh, site administrators um, to really do a walking tour of the school site, look at those different single-use restrooms, and try to see what we could um, identify or designate as student-only access. Um, and most single-use restrooms at the school sites were designated as staff. We also wanted to continue to respect that and provide um, staff with their separate restrooms as well from the students. Um, so taking that stock into um, evaluation and looking at where can we provide students easy access to these single-use restrooms so they don't have to go through an administrative area in order to use a single-use restroom. Um, so I'm happy to say that all the school sites identified at least one restroom that was accessible from a main corridor area um, to be designated for student use only. Um, and then there's additional restrooms that were identified um, throughout the campuses on, on multiple school sites. Um, some still are in the administrative area, and some school sites elected to identify additional single-use restrooms that are m accessible to students, such as in the library. Um, so we're, I'm sure this is going to be a continuing process where we'll continue to evaluate on an annual basis based on needs, but I'm happy to report that all school sites do have single-use restrooms that are available to students um, that are gender neutral. And uh, we also updated all the signage for single-use restrooms to um, have the appropriate gender neutral signage. And also for the students, the student access um, restrooms no longer require a key. They are now a locking mechanism that shows occupied and unoccupied. So any questions? And this does include our elementaries as well, Mr. Rivera, correct? Yes, it does, okay. all school site levels. Thank you for all that quick response, and um, thank uh, Rob Coster for getting that taken care of so quickly. Um, does the board have any questions, comments, public comment on this item? This is just an info item, so we will move on to wow, yeah, board business. What happens when you have two meetings? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, we had one last week, so it's a little bit shorter. But thank you. So, board business comments from the board. Uh, who would anyone care to go first? Pat. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I do have a few comments. Um, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the passion of our teachers. Uh, I've seen a lot of things in the the past week that um, uh, impressed me with the work that they're doing, and uh, I just want to uh, commend them on. Uh, on all the great work that is being done out there on the behalf of our teachers. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to mention, um, uh, in the consent agenda, we had these 11.12 uh, and 3 items, which were um, some rewriting of board policy. And when I went through that, I was really happy to see that, it, it I mean, if I'm understanding it correctly, we've removed some speed bumps in, uh, in allowing uh, students with disabilities to receive uh, free, appropriate, and public education. So I think it was a great, uh, I, I'm not sure what prompted that. 
Um, it wasn't clear in the in the in the report other than that it was done, and uh, so I was glad to see that. I think that's a real improvement. Um, I think somewhere mentioned in this, oh, the 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 honor the NorCal Honor Band trip that Jesse uh, Steele is uh, taking with his students. Uh, I know my own students when they were in high school went on a couple of these trips, and it's it's one of the one of the, well, I should say many things that they remember really well about their time in high school. And uh, uh, they would never tell me all the details of the trip, so I'm sure it was more fun than I, uh, <laughs> I had known. But um, I think it's a great opportunity um, for the kids to be, to go on this, uh, uh, you know, to be recognized and to go on this trip. And also, as, as it mentioned in here, for them to be conducted by uh, someone who was, um, I guess, uh, uh, I know, someone who's important, I guess, in the music business, <laughs> I don't know, uh, beyond their own teacher. So uh, my commendation to Jesse regarding that. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, when I first heard about the um, proposal for uh, gender neutral bathrooms uh, by the student from North Tower High School uh, s several weeks back, um, I thought it was a, uh, a great idea, a great move in the right direction. I'm so happy to see that, you know, we have made uh, um, progress in that area, and I think it 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 adds to the to our uh, one of one of one of my goals to uh, to to do what we can for every single student in our district to uh, to accommodate every single type of student that we have, and I think it uh, benefits students in that way. And um, I I I want to uh, give my appreciation to the Weather Watch staff. Uh, I've been to one of those meetings, and it's um, I. I you know, it's pretty early in the morning, and and they're not just sitting around going, well, I don't know, it looks like snow. There's some detailed reports, and there are staff members that are inspecting school sites and driving bus routes at three o'clock in the morning, and I and who I don't know exactly who all those people are. I know there's some here and here, but I really, really appreciate uh, the work that they're doing there. It's. Uh, it was fun sitting in the one time, but I'll let I'll let the I'll I let the weather watch staff do it from now on. But uh, and uh, that's all. Thank you. That's funny. I did notice that you didn't go to other ones. No, sorry. I said I did notice that you didn't go to the next one. I no I noticed. Oh yeah, no, just once. <laughs> Danielle. Yeah, I'll admit I've been to one also, <laughs> um, but I will try and go to more. Um, I'm pretty good about staying up late and getting up early, so I can kind of work both sides of that. Um, I just want to call out that the town of Trekkie is working on some um, additional housing programs since I know that affordability is a big issue for us in the community. And what they're doing is really strengthening partnerships and as part of that, uh, they're working with the Martis Valley Fund to increase opportunities for home um, purchasing. So um, the Martis Valley Fund used to offer a program for about a $50,000 down payment and it's not free money, it's money that gets paid back, but the town's working with them to increase that to $100,000 and then match that with a home access program that they've created to try and um, encourage people who are selling their homes to sell them to full-time locals. So if anyone is looking at home ownership opportunities, I would encourage them to connect with the Town of Truckee's housing um, staff that they have there to kind of talk through some of these opportunities because these are really innovative programs that the town is putting together to try and crack that nut of affordability in the community and ensure that we stay as a whole community and not just kind of a second homeowner visitor community. Um, it's a huge effort for the staff to do that, but um, I think that the town council's been really good about prioritizing affordability in the community. So I just want to encourage everyone, if you want to learn more, to connect it with the town. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Chris? Um, so I don't have a lot to report since we just met last week, but I do want to say that it's I appreciate the purple shirts that are still here. Um, and I I want you to understand that it is super hard to sit in these seats and not be able to shout out answers to your questions. Um, I agree, I disagree, or whatever, right? Because I just want you to know, those of you who are still here, that we don't sit here and ugh, whatever. That is not even close to what happens. We go to bed with this, we wake up with this, we're very aware that you're in the middle of negotiations, that we, us, are in the middle of negotiations. So I just want to put that out there and um, 
I want to respect the process, so I don't want to break out the details of my thoughts, but I just want you to know that there's no eye rolling on my drive home, and there's no like, oh my gosh, that teacher again. That is just not at all what's happening in my head and in my heart. So, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Kirsten? Well, thanks, Chris, for saying that. You took my, the words out of my mouth, and I'm just kind of glad you did, because I probably would have started crying. Um, two quick things. I know we just met last week, so uh, thanks again for everyone for coming out on a school night. It's really impressive to see the numbers and the dedication, and we know how hard it is for you to come out on a school board, on a school night for this late when you should probably be home with your family. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Um, uh, I'm really excited about this marine biology class. I think that living up here in the mountains, we need more advocates of people who understand the marine sciences. And it really feels great that all the way up here in Tahoe, Truckee, we're going to have a marine biology class. And um, we'll have some exciting advocates, hopefully, to be out there working on behalf of blue zone environmentalist activities, which we desperately need more of. As the proud mother of a marine biologist at UC Santa Cruz, I can say that this is a big trend. And I'm just, I just sent her a picture of this book. So we're getting lots of thumbs up from the UC Santa Cruz bio team. Thank you. That's good for good effort. Um, I also appreciate you guys staying that are here now. We like having public while we're wrapping up our business. Um, the soup's on the move. I went with um, Superintendent Geisels to and uh, Kristen um, to Tahoe Lake Elementary School, which we got to tour the school and see everybody um, in their new classrooms and. Um, it, it's actually, it's probably, I don't know, it's the best place to work. It's so gorgeous. And we were there on a blue day, so as opposed to the days that we've seen. Um, and then you could see out the windows at that point on the second level. I wasn't sure about the first level. <laughs> um, but as I, um, it, it was awesome, and it's great to be back at that school. Um, hats off to those guys who have uh, been there and, and made it all work. It took us a while to get there. Um, but it was great. Um, I will say the big shout out to snow removal. <laughs> like it's not even funny. The, coming down this hallway right here just now, it's all beautiful. You can see those, this actual uh, pavement. Um, this is a sort of a sunny belt over here. Timberland, I don't know if you all have seen Timberland. <laughs> it's like Tahoe Donner. Um, but anyway, I think that um, the resonating back to the community, it definitely is unique. We definitely are in the um, outskirts of, I don't even know what you'd call it, um, no power, no electricity, no cell service. Um, I know it was at the ski area this weekend and we lost the transformer, which lost all of our radios, which meant we couldn't talk to anybody, and then avalanches on the road. So um, definitely, um, I think the mental health discussion that was on there from North Tahoe High just now is uh, definitely take care of yourselves. There's some crazy stuff going on. Um, but um, anyway, okay, moving on. The other thing I did want to say is I am so happy that we have the schools um, showcasing again. That is so awesome for us to see it. We haven't been able to go to the school sites, and so having the showcases are awesome. One, for we get to see the students, but then it just gives the public who aren't necessarily here a chance to see what's happening at our schools, and I think everybody knows that there are so many great things going on. Um, but again, I'm very happy that we have that back again. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll do more of those moving on. Yep. Um, so start planning, teachers and principals, start planning some fun activities. We like interactive. Um, and then the other do thing I wanted to shout out is, uh, Todd, thank you so much for all of your numbers workings and all of the, 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 we've been throwing a lot of things at you from a bunch of different angles. Um, and I know you're wearing a lot of hats, but um, having all of the, the numbers and figures that you have and then sort of giving us understanding as to how and why we've come up with those decisions is extremely important for all of us and um, I appreciate the fact that you have been so diligent in terms of getting it all to all of us and I know you've got some more homework I guess to do for more more things and more negotiations and all these but I um, I just want to publicly just make sure that everyone knows that you've got a lot going on and I think it's it's pretty true to what is out there so I appreciate that and with that I'll adjourn.